story about flying a VFR, my entire family, to Chicago and okay, back. Airliner, be advised there is an aircraft that's uh, in line uh, waiting for the VOR. You can expect delays. Clear direct CADZU, hold as published, maintain 4,000. And you're going to have to... CADZU, can you say 4,000 for Viking 99? Viking 99, actually climb maintain a 3,000. It's possible I may need you to climb to 4. Roger, 3,000, Viking 99. Okay, so, sorry about the flight falling, but no way I'm making this long trip. I'm on my way to North Carolina right now, so I'm not about to make that trip uh, without talking to somebody. Um, regardless, here's the story. So, um, we've been planning this trip to son of a... Jesus, So, we had planned to fly to Chicago um, to visit some family. And we said, hey, let's try it in the airplane. You said you want to go ahead and start with the VOR approach? Cost-wise and fuel is actually cheaper than buying airline tickets. Um, hourly cost of the plane, probably not. If you guys, you guys know, I'm a VFR-only pilot. I'm getting ready to start my IFR, actually, flight training, gone through ground school, everything like that. So um, the flight to Chicago I knew was going to be uh, challenging because I'd have to be Viking very careful with weather. Uh, I'd have to wait IW. for the weather that I wanted. Um, but... Uh, we had, we had like four or five days of good weather, Midwest and East Coast, so I was like, let's just do it. So the flight out there was actually really good weather, um, clear um, for the first half. Okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to do this. Fourth approach, Whitney 271 Whiskey. I'd like to cancel flight following for now. Number 2711 Whiskey, radar services terminated. Squawk VFR, frequency change approved. Have a good day. Right, Squawk VFR, frequency approved. 1 Whiskey, thanks. All right, we'll, mo we'll monitor guard for 10 minutes while I tell you this story. So, okay, flew out Chicago. Where the hell was I? Flew out Chicago. Yeah, okay, the weather. The weather was good for the first half of the way out there. Over the mountains, it was beautiful. Uh, not, not much cloud cover, clear weather, so it was good. Um, the issue was that I had two little kids in the back, so I got my five-year-old and my three-year-old in the back, and I had done a couple of test flights um, already with them to see if they could handle it. Um, I thought they could, and they don't mind the flying, but they can't yet understand uh, how serious it is, right? When I say that I need to talk on the radio and they can't be arguing back there and distracting me, they don't really understand it yet. So they're, they're little kids, right? They're, they're picking at each other. They, oh, he's touching me this. I can't deal with that crap when I'm flying. I'm not that good yet, I'll say, right? I'll be honest. Like, I need to be focusing when I am flying the airplane. I was worried about that going in, and this just confirmed that. So on the way out there, my kids were misbehaving to the point. I mean, they weren't acting bad any, any other time, but for an airplane, they needed to be perfect, and they couldn't do that. I shouldn't have asked that of them, to be honest with you. So that was the main issue. The weather deteriorated as we went out there wind-wise. So it got really windy. We had terrible turbulence, which doesn't bother me, but it's not a comfortable ride for passengers. I was beating them up. The autopilot was having trouble keeping up with it. So just a pain in the butt. And like I said, my kids couldn't understand. So I asked them when we're on the ground, you got to go to the bathroom. We can't go, you know, when we're up there. And they don't understand that it's not like a car where I could just pull over. So on a couple of occasions, we had to land for that. So one time was at 10,000, or not even, we were just cruising and my son had to go pee really bad. I started crying in the background. He had to pee so bad. So we had to land. Unscheduled landing. Not a huge deal. We were near the end of our first leg anyways, so we diverted and landed. The problem with that is I had an airport picked out, and, um, you know, I had been at that airport. I had called them, confirmed fuel, confirmed bathrooms, confirmed everything, um, and now I have to deviate, and I have to do that all over the radio, which is something else to do while you're flying. So that was the problem with that. The next time was my same son. Um, this time we were over Indiana at 10,500 feet in cruise, um, not planning to stop again. We were in cruise on our way. Our next stop was our our, uh, our final point in Chicago, and he started crying again that he had to go pee and poo, and then he started getting white in the face like he was getting sick. I don't know if that was because he was crying or whatever it was, but, um, you know, I, I can't tell if he's being serious or not. You know, he's a little kid, so I just had to, I had to land, so I said, fine. So again, now I'm at 10,500 feet, which is not, I mean, that's high up there, and that's a big thing to go down and land. And it's also windy, so I don't want to be landing and taking off. So, anyway, had to land for that. At this point, I'm getting stressed out. Stress and flying, bad thing. It's not good. So, at this point, I'm thinking in my head, do I just scrap this trip? We're in Indiana. Do I just get a hotel, 
um, and wait for me to calm down, all that. So now that's in my head. Okay, so we get to this airport. He goes to the bathroom. I calm myself down. The weather looks all right to get into Chicago, but it looks like it's going to get bad later on in the evening. So I have, like, a, a window to get in there, um, which I don't like that anyway. Um, the window is that there could be some pre precipitation. And this time of year in Chicago, precipitation could mean icing. It could mean snow. I don't like that. So I make sure I have a big enough window, and I say, okay, we're going to go. Um, the weather is good right now, and we have two hours or three hours before it's supposed to get bad, and it's only an hour leg. So we head out to Chicago. The last leg was fine. Um, we had to stay low um, for turbulence reasons, and uh, also they would not let me through the Class Bravo of, uh, of O'Hare Airport. So we were going to Lake in the Hills. I'll overlay a map here of where that is. Um, it's under one of the Class Bravo shelves, but they wouldn't let me through it, and I was not about to go all the way around it, so I had to go under it. And that was fine. Like I said, the weather was good enough for that. It was clear weather. Um, that area of Chicago, there's actually a lot of farmland as well, like big fields, areas to get to drop out if you had to from that altitude. So um, that was fine. We get to Chicago, and I'm tying up the plane, and it is so windy. We're talking 20, gusting 35. Like, it is windy. Luckily, it's not crosswind, so, and I checked that before I left wasn't cross, but it was windy. Um, a day that if I wasn't like already flying, I would not have flown. I'd say, no, we're not. I don't even want to fly, and let alone am I taking my family. So I already don't like the, the decisions I'm making for this trip. It's one of those things where I'm like, like I just, it's not perfect, and I can't ask for it to be perfect, but I'm a VFR pilot. I can't be, I'm not going to, I already think I'm not going to do this again. Um, so the trip while we were there visiting my brother and my nieces and nephews was amazing. I got to see my grandparents hang out. Uh, I just love going home. Um, I wouldn't want to live in that area anymore, I don't think, just for, for the cost, but man, oh man, was it awesome. Loved hanging out with my brother. Uh, he's uh, My little brother, a little younger than me, is a police officer in the Chicago suburb, suburbs area, um, and we just have a great time hanging out. It was amazing. So, awesome trip. So much fun. Uh, when it comes time to leave, I don't like the weather on the day we had planned to leave. I told my wife that's a possibility. Look, we might not leave when we want to leave. Uh, and I didn't like the weather. There was too much cloud cover, and without icing, uh, de-icing capabilities on this aircraft, I was not willing to risk that in some freezing temperatures, which it was. Um, it was like 20, 20 degrees uh, with the wind chill, and then it just got colder as it went up. I said, and the wind was bad, so we scrapped it the first day. The next day was looking better, so I said, let's plan to leave then. When the day finally came, checked the weather. It looks good. It's just windy. Um, let's set it. This is where <laughs> it, get, it gets interesting, or more interesting. So I get there. It is... 20 degrees or, or colder in the morning with the wind chill. So I have never started this plane in that temperature. I couldn't find a plug to plug the damn thing in to warm it up. It's got an engine, uh, like an oil heater. I couldn't use that. So my family's frozen. I put them in the FBO, and I come out, and I warm up the airplane. Um, I'm, so I'm sitting in the airplane for 30 minutes just on the ground letting it warm up so that they don't have to freeze uh, in the airplane while I'm doing that. Get the plane warmed up, get back out. Um, you know, I had to do the pre-flight pre and everything. Get, get the family in the airplane, and we're packed in here, right? We've got our luggage. They're in the back. The kids are good to go. Uh, wife has a pile of crap on top of her. Like, she's got her, you know, her books and iPads in her bag. Um, so I'm, like, shoving it back so I make sure I have room for everything. And I'm going through my pre-flight, and when it gets time to check the passenger door, I check it. I push on it. It doesn't move, okay? My fault. I should be really stressing that door and checking it, and I should be making sure that that handle is fully locked. In fact, now, I am the only one that closes that door. Even if the passenger is another pilot, they have a Mooney, I don't care. I'm shut the door from now on. I should have done that anyways. My fault. So we go to take off, and we take off, and we are in climb out. It's very windy, so it's bumpy. I'm flying the airplane. It's fine. And the door pops open, and it is loud. It pops open. Everyone's ears pops. And it's a, and there's wind in the cockpit. My wife says, ah, and she grabs the door. It doesn't swing open. It just pops open. And she's holding the door, and she's freaking out. The kids now are both freaking out, crying. And now I have an in-flight emergency on climb out, right? So I tell Lauren, say, hold the door. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. I'm flying the airplane. So I'm flying the airplane now. I know the door is open. I don't care. I, I, I don't care about the freaking door at this point. I'm flying the airplane. Um, you know, we're, we're not even at 500 feet yet. So... I'm watching that. I say, Lauren, just take a deep breath. It's fine. We can fly with the door open. It's not a big deal. Let the kids cry. Okay, so I ISO them out so I don't hear them crying, and I fly the airplane. But she cannot get the door closed. In the Cessna that I used to have, door open, no big deal. Grab it, close it. I guess in these planes, it's hard to close the door. You guys can comment down below if you know of something similar. I didn't know that. Um, but most guys cannot get the door closed in flight. I did not know that. 
We could not get it closed. I could not pull it closed. I could not get it closed. Um, so I said, okay, we're going to come back and land. So I get, you know, crosswind, downwind. My wife the whole time is holding the door. The kids are crying. Um, it is windy. I, it's it's not, not good weather for, like, taking up and, and doing pattern work, right? Um, so I land, and uh, we get the door closed. And that was very stressful for the kids and, the, and my wife and me. Now I've got that. So that's how the trip started. So I you know, get off the runway, make sure the door is closed this time, go back through my pre-flight uh, checklist, make sure we have everything again. And we're ready to go. And we get up and we fly out. And, um, we depart Lake of the Hills. Now at this point, we've got, we've got cloud cover here, cloud cover there. I know it's clear to the south. I can see it's clear to the south. So I get out to the south. And I fly maintaining visual sight with the ground, right? I, ha I can go VFR on top, but it's below freezing, so I'm not willing to do that because if I have an engine out, I, I would have to descend through the clouds, um, which, number one, is illegal, and number two, I could get icing. So I, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to fly with that, especially my family in the cockpit. So I have to keep deviating south because this overcast layer just keeps kind of pushing me south and south and south. So I'm having to, like, fly south instead of southeast, uh, which is how I get home. And I'm like going out now, southern Indiana, and this trip is just getting extended. Doing this VFR, I knew that was going to be a problem. And the cold weather, even if I was IFR, I wouldn't have done it because if you know if you have an engine out, sure you can legally descend through the clouds, but what if there's icing in those clouds? And there was reports of icing all over the place. That terrifies me. So you know, it, it's part of it. That's piloting, right? That's making sure that you have a plan, and you know, you're not going to always be able to go direct. I understand that. So that's just the way it was. And I just lost my face camera, so uh, we're on one camera now. So that I, I knew I knew that was going to be the case with this trip, and it was. So um, the trip back was not as stressful. The boys were much much better, and uh, the only things that were an issue was this overcast layer that I eventually could not go around anymore. So I was up above it; it was you know scattered, and then it was moving to broken ahead. So I I dipped down through. Uh, the scattered layer, and I just maintained VFR low through Indiana, which I don't like flying low, but like I said, it was smooth, clear air, and lower than I like, but that was my choice. I went underneath it uh, until I could pop out the other side, which uh, the weather was forecasted to be, the clouds were forecasted to be higher on the other side. We made it out um, through Indiana to, um, you know, better weather and cleaner air, I forget where we stopped, but the stop was fine. And um, our last leg, I was able to complete at 11,500 with clear, clear line of sight to the ground, clear air, and a 50 knot tailwind, which was awesome. I was seeing 200 knot ground speeds. I think I hit 200. I might have hit 196, 197, and then you know, push it forward a little bit to see that uh, 200 ground speed on my uh, on my GPS. But um, yeah, we we made it home. Uh, obviously in good time with that with that tailwind, but I'll tell you this. In summary, I'm, I'm not doing that again. I don't know if I'll ever do it again um, with the family. I just, I don't know. W w when my family's in the cockpit, I just, it's everything I do, I'm, I'm more nervous about, and that's not a good thing, I don't, I, I don't think, but I just think about my kids and my wife, and it's like, I don't care if I put myself at risk, um, you know, not intentionally on accident, but if I do something and it puts them at risk, then, you know, the implications of that decision are, are much higher. And that's what I'm thinking in my head. So, I, for sure I'm not going to do that again until I have my IFR certification and more hours. You know, I have no plans for a better airplane. Um, so, I'll probably never have de-icing capabilities. I just don't think I can do it in a manner safe enough that I'm willing to, to do that with my family is the conclusion on that. So, Definitely a huge milestone in my aviation career, right? I went somewhere. That's the first time I went somewhere in my airplane ever. Went somewhere and landed and slept there and flew home. You know, that's the first time I've ever went on a trip, period. So it was an awesome experience. Uh, definitely an accomplishment in my eyes. Uh, but not the kind of flying I'm looking for right now. Not the kind of stressful flying I'm looking for. So not going to do it again, but glad I did it. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, you know... I enjoy. I appreciate you guys coming along on my aviation journey. As you guys know, this is all, all so I can fly one day professionally. Uh, I do want to make a career change eventually and uh, fly professionally, and this is all, all for that. This is the only reason I'm doing all this, and only reason I can justify spending the money that I spend on all this. So, you know, 
I'm learning. I'm growing. You know, moving along as fast as I have money to do it, pretty much. So, thank you guys for watching. If you liked, don't forget to like, subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to, all that jazz. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.